Hi everybody and welcome back. After upgrading my NAS into an all SSD NVMe solution, I found myself with a really nice problem to have. I have a heck of a lot of spare HDD drives. And just as I was about to start a garage sale, the folks from Link Plus said, don't sell the HDDs because we're just about to release the Link Station S1, which is awesome because who doesn't like new gadgets? Now in the box, we have the Link Station S1, a power cable, the manual, and the perpetual license for Unraid which gives you one year of free updates. Now, starting from the front of the NAS, we have the power button, a bunch of LEDs for each individual drive and LAN, a little slot for your USB-C 10 gigabit and USB-A connection. There is a lot of connectivity in this thing. And if we flip it around, we can also see the LEDs on the other side. On the back of the device, there are two switches, one for the LEDs and another one for the mini monitor on the front. And by the way, this is pretty easy to miss because I thought the LEDs were just simply not working on my device when I switched my NAS on, but no, you just basically need to turn them on. Then you have a few more USB-A connections, another USB-C, an HDMI port, and two 2.5 gigabit network interfaces. Now, some of you might be wondering why would you need two network cards? Well, you can do a bunch of stuff with this. For example, you can set up a bond, use link aggregation, or you can just set up a failover for high availability, for example. Or you can just completely go wild and decide to forget about this NAS business and turn it into a firewall with like PFSense and OpenSense. <laughs> I'm just joking, but not really. Anyway, these are some more advanced topics that I'm not going to cover today, you know, maybe in the future. And if this is something that you would like to know more in detail, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video doing some crazy stuff like that. <laughs> now, the top is magnetic. So you just pop it off and under it, you can find the four slots for your mechanical drives. And I got to say that everything in this NAS is toolless. You will not need a screwdriver or pliers or a hammer because everything works quite nicely. Just press the button on a slot and they come off quite easily. And just as easy, you can pop them also back in. Then on the side from this angle, it kind of like looks like a mini fridge and it's making me quite thirsty now that I think of it. If we flip it around again and remove the magnetic cover, we find at the bottom the battery for the board and the flash drive containing the Unraid OS, which if you want to install another OS, you will have to remove this right here, you know, similar to the LinkStation N1 and the N2. Then you also have the DDR SoDim, and this uh, device comes with eight gigabytes of DDR5, but you can easily upgrade it. And then finally, another compartment, and this one is not magnetic, but it has also a button that you can just slide down and it gives you access to the uh, um, NVMe slots. Now, these slots follow the same design that we've seen on the LinkStation N1 and N2, which is again, toolless. And all you need to do is just fit the drives at an angle and then slide the little lever onto the side. Now, I'm not going to do this one right here because I ran out of NVMe drives. And I know I say this in most of my videos, but we are a tiny channel, so I really appreciate your support. Just click the like button and subscribe, and that will help me to keep making, you know, awesome content for you guys, and cheers for that. Now, I have these two Seagate Iron Wolf drives with four terabytes, and they're designed for NASes, so let me show you how to fit it exactly on these little slots. You simply pop the lid, press the button, and then just slide them. Just check where the connectors align and put the drives in that direction. Again, no tools required, no screws, just gently press them to fit them in the socket and you should hear a tiny little click. Now, once again, just align them and slide them back in, then close them and the installation is very smooth. So you don't need to put lots of pressure. Um, and if you find yourself doing that, just remove the drive and try again. In terms of specs, now this thing has the most powerful CPU out of the Link Plus devices that I've been reviewing on this channel. The CPU is an Alder Lake N97 with a max turbo boost up to 3.60 gigahertz. And it has four cores and supports memory up to 32 gigabytes. And you can also go as high as 4,800 megahertz on the memory. The iGPU is also way more powerful with 1.20 gigahertz, making it quite ideal for, you know, your local Jellyfin server. It comes with Unraid, like all other Link Plus products, 
and a perpetual license with one year of upgrades. And after that, you need to pay and rate, I believe, 36 bucks a year if you want to keep receiving those upgrades or updates, sorry, updates. It also has internal storage of 128 gigabytes eMMC, four bay SATA and two bay NVMe, as we've seen earlier. And also comes with an HDMI connection, which is awesome because not a lot of devices uh, or NASs at least sometimes come with HDMI connection and that's a pain in the butt. And two 2.5 gigabit network cards. Now, personally, I would have preferred just one 10 gigabit NIC and just use a one terabyte cache pool. Okay, so it's time to turn this thing's power on. Now, you will notice the cool mini monitor starts to spin and you have a few screens that, uh, you know, you can just flip with your finger. The mini monitor shows you your IP address, you know, it shows you some stats about your NAS, like the temperature, the memory usage and the CPU load. So it kind of saves you from having to log in to check. Now, you can either type tower.local or copy the IP address from the mini monitor and walk that into your browser. Just make sure that you connected your S1 to a router or a switch. You will be prompt to enter a password, which I did earlier. I just forgot to press the record button uh, and I didn't want to do a factory reset just for that, but trust me, it is just password. Now, once you do that, you either activate the 30 day trial or you redeem the license. They advise you to actually use the trial and why not? Because it gives you 30 days and after that, you can just enter the license. So essentially you get 13 months of free updates basically. Once you do that, and as always, the first thing that I do uh, is to upgrade and rate to the latest stable version. And to do that, you just click on the tools and then update OS. Then you select the stable version, click on the view change log, and then continue to update on tower. Confirm and start the update. And once done, just click on done and restart your Unraid server. Now, the rest of the stuff like setting up users, shares, install Jellyfin, etc. I already covered all of that on my LinkStation N1 and N2 videos. And I will leave the links in the description. So no point of doing that all over again because the configuration is pretty much the same. The only change is that now we're using HDD instead of NVMe. So rather than creating a pool, we're creating an array. Because with HDD, we no longer have trimming issues or parity problems. In fact, this is where Unraid really shines. You can have disks of different sizes and at least two parity disks. Just make sure that the parity disk is the biggest drive on the array. Now, once your array is full, you can just add another disk without having to recreate the entire array. And the S1 also supports hot swapping for the HDDs, not for the NVMEs, okay? This is the bread and butter of Unraid, and this is also why it's so popular for home labbers. So let's create that array with these two Iron Wolf disks. So click on the main tab, select three slots, and I'm going to assign one disk to parity and another one as disk one. The disks are exactly the same size, so if one fails, my data is safe. Then you can click start, and you might have to format them. And of course, this will erase all of your data. And that's it. Then you just need to wait for the parity to sync, and in my case, it looks like it's going to take about four hours, and once that's complete, just restart the server um, and start the array. I love this device and the easiness of configuring it and upgrading it, especially the fact that I can add more memory to it quite easily. And I love the way that it looks as well, even though I've been calling it a mini fridge, but no, I really like the design. And one of my favorite things about these LinkStation devices is that Link Plus, the company that makes them, doesn't really lock you to a NAS OS. Sure, they give you like the free and raid license, but you can install whatever you want in them. Now, in terms of price, Link Plus hasn't officially launched any prices, but it should be around the 300 and 400 dollars or pounds or euros. But again, check on the site for the latest information. Now, what's good and what's bad about this device? I would have loved if it had a 10 gigabit card, but that's not really an issue for me personally. The only thing that I complain is that the fan is loud. <laughs> And I'm totally spoiled by the N1 and the N2, which are quiet as a mouse. So personally, I prefer SSD and NVMe for that reason alone. I just, I just got too spoiled, sorry. However, you don't really hear any kind of like drumming from the HDD. You know, sometimes 
NASA sound like a drum machine. Also, I noticed that you can't really spin down the drives. And if you want to do that, you need to comment the Go script, which is the API that communicates with the mini monitor in the front. And I spoke about this when I installed TrueNAS on my N1. And this is something that I think Link Plus actually needs to address. But you can sort that out quite easily by clicking on Main, Flush, go to Config, locate the Go file, and comment this line right here. Then you just need to restart the server and you know you are able to spin down the drives. This is kind of crucial because it will save a lot of power. You know, on full load with two discs, we're hitting about 35 watts, but this is when we're doing the parity, right? And with discs spun down, we're looking at like 22 watts to 24 watts. I mean, this, this is crucial. If you have more drives, the energy consumption, of course, will also increase. So down spinning is quite important if you want to save electricity. Now, what should you choose? The N1, the N2, or the S1? If you have a few HDD drives already in different sizes and you don't want to spend extra money on SSDs, because those are more expensive per gigabyte, the S1 is for you. It has a better CPU, iGPU, and HDD, like I said, is a lot cheaper and caters for a lot more data. However, you do have to cope with the fan noise, which is quite standard, to be honest, on mechanical drives, because these do get hot. If, however, you don't require massive amounts of storage and want a quiet, more compact solution that you can put in your living room without your wife filing for a divorce, I would definitely go with the N2. It also has a pretty acceptable CPU, an N100 CPU, which has pretty decent low power iGPU. It has a 10 gigabit network card and it works flawlessly. And since it's SSD, it also consumes a lot less power than spinning disks. So I guess this is the trade-off. Either you pay more upfront uh, on the per gigabyte or um, you pay a bit less, but then you're compromising on your electricity bill. Now, believe it or not, I am still using the N1, which has the N5105 CPU, because I'm a lazy git, um, but it's their first iteration for the link station. I also have uh, most of my home services running there, including a Jellyfin server for all my media, and this thing is just rock solid, even with that CPU. And I know that a lot of people complain about it, but honestly, that CPU has been working really, really well for me. Now, I did install TrueNAS on the N1 because I don't really see the point of using NRAID with NVMe, sorry. But if you are using HDD and have disks of different sizes, NRAID is a very good choice and very flexible also. Now, we have reached the end of the video and I really hope that you guys have enjoyed it and this was useful to you. And if you were looking for an NAS that is HDD based, this one is quite a catch. So please, please, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.